Welcome back everyone. In this next video or two we're going to talk about static fields and methods. Static fields and methods are useful to know about because a lot of the classes that you're going to use in your projects you're going to look up the documents for them and you're going to see this word static probably pop up quite a bit. You should know what it means, how it affects the fields and the methods, how it affects the use of the fields of the methods, and then when it's appropriate in your own programs to use them and the advantages or little tricks you might be able to do with them. So let's start off just by giving you a very big general overview of what the term static does to your fields and methods. It basically means that your field or your method belongs to the class as a whole and that field or method is not belonging to the individual instances that you create. Let's say I had a player class and I'm going to make a game where there's going to be hundreds of players and here I've only done three but let's say you create a couple players in memory. Usually the variables and the methods you declare inside of your class that are not static every single instance like P1, P2, P3 they get copies of those fields and those methods so they're sitting there in memory each player would have an ID, each player would have a direction, each player has their own score. But when you declare variables as static, each instance doesn't keep a copy, just one copy is made and the entire class gets to share it. So even if I had a hundred players, they are all going to share the variable called last player created. They're all going to share the method called get last person created. Now there's obviously little rules that go along for this to be able to work. Let's just break into a bit of a simpler code and see well what's the first advantage to making fields and methods static. To do this I'm going to break into my project here called static class example. I'm actually going to pass on the player class for this one and just jump to the simple class called calculator. You're going to see my calculator class here. I've left it pretty thin. I've got a variable called pi which I have declared as static and I have a method called power a to the power b which I've also declared as static. So here's one thing you can do once you've done this. These do not belong to individual instances of the calculator class. They belong to the class itself and so this is what it allows you to do. In the olden days you probably would have done this calculator c is new calculator. System printout, hey C, access your pi variable. C's the calculator, it has the pi variable. Now you can still do that. You can see there's no problem here. Now NetBeans is suggesting uh, you might want to do something else, but still this is allowed. You could have done this. Hey C, your calculator, use your power method. Right? And this works. But what we want to do because we know this is a static method is you now get to do this instead and this is way better you can just directly access these straight from the class itself so print out pi you just print out calculator class access pi calculator class use the power method give me the answer back not bad right you might have used these before in previous programs if you ever had to do any math. You'll see here, math class has tons of static methods. This just lets you access them just like this. There's no need to create an instance of the math class by saying something like math m is new math. You can just do this, math.squareRoot25. And it's going to run the method because it's a static method. So this is one advantage of the static methods and one advantage of the static fields. Now, of course, there must be rules. Somebody's going to say, why don't you just make everything a static method then and we can always do this. Now, to answer that, we're going to have to leave the calculator class and we're actually going to jump to the player class because the player class is going to give us more to work with, which really shows why you just can't make everything static. Here's my player class. Now the player class basically has a couple variables. I have some variables 
declared as we always declare variables. Public integer, score, ID, and direction. These are instance variables. These are variables that when you create a player, each player will get this set of variables built in. And that's represented well by this diagram here. If I keep making players, new variables keep being made in memory, and each player gets its own set. But the static variables, these are variables that are shared. Okay, They belong to the whole class. You don't have to create any instances to get them. So these ones are called next ID and last player created. But we're not going to worry about them just yet. What I'm more concerned about, because our original question was, why not go and make everything static? Well, let's go show you right here. Public, static, void, add score. So I just threw the word static there because I say, why not make everything static? And you get a problem. It says non-static variable my score and some little error. Here's what it's trying to tell us. A static method is supposed to be accessible to you, the coder, by doing something like this. Hey, player class, run your add score method. But the problem is, and it's allowing it here because I have said that add score is static. But in the player class, it's saying, no, 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 you cannot make this method static. And the reason is you're trying to use the my score variable. The class itself, player, right, the class player, these are the only static variables that it owns, right? Those are the variables that belong to the class. A static method can't use a variable that belongs to instances. Because if you think about it, when I do this, there's no player there. There's no player that's been created. And if there's no player that's been created, you do not have these three variables. They just don't exist. These two variables exist because they belong to the player class. But these three, you only get them when you create instances, right? You only get them when you do stuff like make player one, make player two, make player three. So this is a rule with static methods. Static methods can't try to use or change, let's just say use, they can't use instance variables. They can only fiddle with class variables, the static ones. And maybe that error seems a little more common sense now. A non-static variable, my score, cannot be used by a static method. Because if you did try to use that method, add score, what's it adding 10 to? There's no variable to add it to. We've never even created a player yet. So hopefully that makes sense. That's the rule with static. And that's why you just can't go and make everything static. Now when I pop back here, I could have, let's just take that line out, this won't make any sense, but I could have fiddled with a static variable. So this one called next ID, that's no problem. The class does own, I could have said next ID plus plus, all good, right? A static method can make adjustments and use static variables of the class because they're always there. They belong to the class. So those are your basic rules of when you can make a method static and your basic rule of what you get access to when you've got a static variable or a static method. In the next video, we're going to take a look at what this is actually maybe allow you to do. How can this maybe be used in an actual program? And we're going to use our player class here to see how we can give every player a unique ID when they're created by using this knowledge of the static class. So see you in that video. Thanks for watching.